you feel will soon subside. Your next comedian coming to the stage is gonna wow you with yeah. laughter. Give it up for Christopher Rover. Yeah. Hey everybody, it's Silver Star Saloon. How you doing tonight? Yeah. All right, and where are my old people at? Any old people in here tonight? Yeah. God damn right. Uh, I'm 47 years old this year, and I learned a few things about myself, and I learned a few things about other people. One of the things I learned recently is that AARP has a lot more confidence in how much longer I'm going to live than I do. Uh, I'm not that optimistic about it. Uh, I don't. Three years? I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> Other stuff I learned, I learned, you know, the, the, the dad talks you get if you're a little boy, or the dad, the parent talks you get if you're a little kid. They don't prepare you for actual adult problems, they prepare you for shit they're supposed to tell you in school. Why does it your dad sit you down and say, by the way, when you hit 40, your balls are going to just start smelling crazy bad all the time. You're going to smell like you fell asleep and 12 homeless people just pissed on your nuts all night. It's not a fucking good smell. Gold bond is not a cure for that shit either. Although it is lovely. It's like uh, air conditioning for poor people. It's great. There's a lot of rules I think that should change for people my age. If you have a bus pass and you're approaching 50, you're just allowed to cry in public now. Nobody can judge you for that shit, alright? That's fucking normal and appropriate. If you see an old person crying in public, they need a ride, okay? 100% of the time. Just go up to them and ask them to get in your car. Guaranteed, old people will get in your car. They might not know where the fuck they need to go, but they'll get in that car. Old people shit. My mother is old. I'm old. I have an, old, an older mother. But if for some reason, we're kind of aging into the same social demographic now. Like, we watch... I'm starting to watch procedural dramas. I, I swear to God, I'm going to change my name to something super Jewish and move to Florida in about a week. My mother is doing this... Yeah, I'm sure some of you people have done it or have family members have done it. I'm just going to say if you haven't done it, and look, I'm not trying to throw shade, 23 and me is some bullshit, all right? Don't, you don't need to know you're 23 and me. Uh, it's, no, it's insane. All right, the last thing white people need is the fucking race card. You're just fucking white. Deal with that shit. It's fine. <laughs> My mother did 23 and me. She calls me on the phone. She says, I got 23 and me. They got a 75% or 25% off coupon. You want me to... To do it, you got it right. Yeah, we do it for you. I said no. I don't want to know. I, people treat me how they look at me. It doesn't matter what my history is. She goes, oh well, that's okay. I found out I'm 22% Moroccan, and, and at that moment in time, I found out my mom's 100% fucking stupid and doesn't know how to do math. How am I? Not, or she's telling me I'm adopted in like the shittiest way possible. Either way, get ready for my like kind of racist Moroccan material. You got access to that now, right? It's brutal. <laughs> She's a mess, you guys. I mean, let's give you an example. My name is Christopher. Christ, my name's Christopher. I'm a Jew named Christopher. I'm a Jew named after basically the number one cause of death among Jews. Thank God we weren't Dominican, because I don't think uh, you know Hurricane Irene would have been a good name for me, right? It's, it's topical. <laughs> I got enough from New Orleans, right? Type 2 diabetes is even worse. It's terrible. She, uh, she calls me on the phone and she says, Honey, I'm a Buddhist now. 67 year old Jewish lady moves to Florida, becomes a Buddhist. I can't do the math on that. I said, Mom, how, how are you a Buddhist? You're a Buddhist now. How, did that, how does that go? But how do you become a Buddhist? She goes, well, they put a Buddhist center in Inglewood, which is the town where she lives in, and I drive by it, and I look at them, and I feel good when I do, and I say, that's how you become a Buddhist. So, I'm really worried because she's also a bird watcher, so I'm expecting that phone call where it's like, honey, I'm a heron now. <laughs> oh, she's terrible. She, uh, when I was a kid, I'm old, we covered that, right? Some things are different than they were now. You're gonna hear some old people shit, just nod. You can zone out. Order your drinks, it's fine. When I was a kid, they didn't know what to do with all of this, you know? So they had one classroom and they'd just stick all the alternates in there. You know what I'm talking about, right? The otheries, you know? ADD, ADHD, fully blown retarded. It didn't matter, we were all in the same classroom. So I gotta think there's paperwork out there that's gotta be registered like that. But I want to, you know, I'm not, I'm not actually retarded, but I'm 
I was raised retarded. It's like I'm culturally retarded. But I'm not practicing anymore, except during the holidays. I'm with my family. I, uh, I work for interesting people. Italians. Um, are there any Italian people in here tonight? Good, because I don't like to talk slow. Oh, shit. Oh, damn. <laughs> here's the thing about you don't know sometimes, right? Because just, just like everybody else, unless, here's how you spot when you're working for an Italian person. If there's an opportunity for racism, you will spot that Italian person right the fuck away. They will Italian people are actually very culturally advanced. By the age of 16, they're 80 year old racist already. It's fucking wonderful. <laughs> See, I want you guys to just decompartmentalize that because you're trying to guess, is it racist for him to make fun of Italians, right? Because then you have to decide whether Italians are white or not, which is something I'm really struggling with myself. <laughs> Italians are just like Jewish people. It's really just lateral, right? I mean, they're just like Jews who are bad with money, you know? It's the same thing. <laughs> Irish are like Jews who are good with money but bad with alcohol. It's basically the same thing. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a truth teller. That's what I am. I'm a truth teller. Speaking of the truth, I don't know if I set a record or not, but I'm wondering if anybody else has had this experience. How many months can you masturbate to methamphetamine pornography before you realize you're masturbating to methamphetamine pornography? Like, you just have to deep dive. Basically, you have to get really into it and go for the unedited before you find out. But I have links if you guys are into it. It's the best. It really is. They just think, well, here's the thing, they don't look like they'd leave you, you know? It's very appealing to certain people. What's in the news? You guys want to talk about the news? Fun stuff going on. Anybody surprised Robert Kraft got busted for deflating his balls? Pats fans, baby. Uh, as a person who has lied to keep a job and is engaged in self-harm, I don't really have a problem with Jesse Smollett. I have never employed two immigrants when I've self-harmed to keep a job, so respect. This, also, by the way, here's the argument I hear online. What if, what if they'd arrested two white guys walking around in South Chicago with MAGA hats on? I have a suggestion, just a thought. If you're two white guys walking around South Chicago with MAGA hats on, you were looking for some kind of fucking trouble anyways. Problem solved, you got it. Too political. I did three times, <laughs> Thank you. No, it's me. I love the fans. Uh, I want to. I'm just gonna. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about. I don't know what that means. Does that mean get the fuck off the stage? You got too political, Chris. I've been doing stand up for about three years now. You can probably tell, right? And some of the things I've learned in that time. Uh, number one. If you look like me, you really can't do impressions. It's not, it's not a good idea for me to do impressions. I do one sort of impression. It's of my brother-in-law. He is Mexican, but it's not racist. Because he sounds exactly like me, but he's way more into soccer than fucking my sister. <laughs> I don't know shit about soccer. Uh, the other thing you learned is that if you have a square job, which most of us do, uh, you really can't tell your coworkers that you do comedy, right? Because everybody has their own specific idea about what comedy is. It's, it doesn't break down to what a comic would like. It's like a some guy who's into sports talking to somebody who just watches a game once in a while. And I tell this guy I work with, Jerry. And by the way, that's his real name, and if you could just close your eyes and picture a Jerry, you got him. That's fucking Jerry. It's Jerry. Uh, such, he's a, such a Jerry. It's become a fucking joke. Uh, he's Jerry and all of it. I tell Jerry, I, I do stand up. I've been doing it at that time for about a month. I think I'm just King Big Dick. And I'm so excited to tell somebody about it. And Jerry's like, oh my God, I love stand up comedy. I love it. It's the best. And I'm like, oh my God, great. I can talk to this guy about stand up for like the next couple of hours while I'm selling fucking deep fried elephant ears at the zoo. So that's a great job. Uh, you know how many times a day you get asked if they're real elephant ears, by the way? That's, don't fucking do that. Or do. I don't know if you're a horrible person. Go ahead. So I tell Jerry, I say, I do, I do stand-up, and he says, I love stand-up. I say, well, great, who's your favorite comedian? He says, Peanut. Now, I don't know who the fuck Peanut is. I think he's talking about Gabriel Iglesias, Fluffy, because he had just released an album with food on the cover of the album, 
And I thought, well, maybe he's just, you know, mixing up food. And he says, I said, well, tell me, I says, you sure it's not the heavy Mexican guy? And he goes, no, he's from an island. At this point, I think Jerry doesn't know the difference between Samoans and Mexicans, which is a common thing in my life. I see that a lot. A lot of, a lot of jokes about that in the scene. Uh, and I'm just, I'm like, I'm trying to narrow it down. And after some time, we find out that, that Peanut is Jeff Dunham's purple fucking puppet that sits on the end of his wrist. Jerry's favorite comedian is Peanut the fucking puppet. And it was at that point in time where I was like, you know, I don't, I, what's the point in being good at anything, being good at comedy, spending time writing, doing your thing, because if you've got a fucking sock at the end of your hand, that's all anybody's going to be paying attention to the whole time you're up there. And that's the futility of this thing, and that's the beauty of it. I really felt like that was going to be funnier, i got to be honest with you. It was funny to me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you.